A lot of people want to know more about 3D software and how they are used. Two of the well-known 3D software that artists and studios rely on are SideFX, Houdini and Maya, and each of them has different things to offer. In this video we will try to give you a comparison and an overview of what these two professional 3D software are capable of and how they are used across different 3D computer graphics industries. The VFX industry. Maya has a very powerful set of tools for creating visual effects, that's why a lot of artists and studios, even the biggest studios such as Wada Digital rely on it to work on some of the biggest feature films and TV shows. It has been around long enough to be one of the best options for VFX artists and studios to get their job done. Of course it is not perfect because often we need third-party plugins and custom created tools to speed up the workflow, have more control when creating complex projects, and of course to generate the best results possible. SideFX Houdini is also a 3D package that can be relied on when it comes to visual effects production, and it offers a fantastic set of features for creating visual effects or what is known as VFX. Houdini has a different approach to working on visual effects projects because it is node based and works procedurally for the most part. It can help artists more easily respond to the director's or client feedback with the ability to make changes at any time, even deep into production. And this is one of the most important reasons why it is strong. But Maya, on the other hand, has only many steps you can go back to to make changes. Houdini can be used to create feature film quality destruction effects with its advanced particle and dynamics tools and does not need a lot of third-party tools and plugins. Also Houdini is favored for teamwork and for studios working on complex projects due to the flexibility it offers. Actually some of the best studios rely on it to work on blockbusters using the power it has when it comes to particles, fractured rigid body dynamics and to create massive simulations using tools such as packed primitives to optimize memory and take projects to the next level. Game Development Maya is one of the best 3D programs, if not the best 3D program in the video game industry because it has all the necessary tools that they need to get their job done. Maya is dominating the video game industry since the 90s and a big portion of game development studios use it as an essential part of their pipeline because it is very good for creating video game characters, environment assets, and of course it has a fantastic set of rigging and animation tools that makes the job of animators easier and allows them to generate better results. While Houdini on the other hand is not currently used in game development studios as a major tool that artists can rely on like Maya is, but it can be very handy for creating procedural game environments using the Houdini engine. Actually Ubisoft is one of the biggest game development studios that used it to create natural environments for their game Far Cry 5. Indie video game developers can also use Houdini to save time and effort when working on their projects because they have limited resources. Motion Graphics and Advertising Houdini node-based workflow lets motion graphics artists work on complex projects. It is actually one of the best competitors to Cinema 4D which is a weapon of choice for a big portion of motion graphics artists. Houdini lets artists and studios fully explore idea then easily make changes to generate multiple iterations giving a high degree of flexibility and control over their projects. Also Maya can be used for advertising work because for the most part what advertising production studios do has a lot in common with VFX and animation projects. But when it comes to motion graphics Houdini is just superior to Maya. Modeling For polygonal modeling, Maya is easier to use and can generate better results in a shorter period of time overall. Because Autodesk has improved Maya modeling tools to be equivalent to what we can find in Blender or 3ds Max, let's just say. The UV unwrapping in Maya used to be bad and a lot of artists that used Maya had to use UV unwrapping plugins or they had to use Blender because it was a better option. But now Maya has way better UV unwrapping tools compared to what it had before. Also Maya's Norbs modeling works great and it is useful for organic modeling and high accuracy curved surfaces. When it comes to modeling, a lot of artists feel like Houdini falls short compared to Maya in terms of speed and efficiency. But I don't think it is a good thing to do 
100% of the work non-procedurally because you are denying yourself many tricks you won't have in non-procedural mediums, such as Houdini. To be honest, a lot of plugins and add-ons bring more to Maya in terms of automation and proceduralism because doing everything manually is unhealthy, especially when we are limited by time or projects are just too big. The current issues with Houdini's modeling have less to do with its procedural nature and more to do with other factors. Actually, the way Houdini works can be very effective in terms of the necessary effort and time-wise as well, especially when modeling environments and natural scenes. If you don't want to model everything in Houdini, you can use Blender because it is very good and easy to use for modeling and the best thing is, it is free. So you probably want to use it because it is commonly used for this purpose. The problem with modeling in Houdini is that there is still a gap in the ease of use and a lot of artists can find this problematic. I mean the little things that you need to toggle on or off quickly, which can throw people off sometimes. For anyone seeing something in the first time being modeled in Houdini, especially if they used to model in other software such as Maya, the first thought that probably will come to their mind is there is more effort that is being spent to model stuff that can be modeled easily and relatively quickly in other software. When we compare Houdini to Maya in terms of modeling, it is obvious to most artists that Maya is more practical and can get more done when working on, let's just say, characters, environment props, and so on. But Houdini is more effective for generating procedural environments and things that need a lot of time and a lot of effort. That's why I believe a lot of artists that come from different backgrounds find it difficult sometimes or for the most part, but side effects are trying to make it more appealing to the ordinary user in every release. Animation Lots of big studios use Maya as a critical piece of their production pipeline, from rigging, modeling, all the way through character animation. Its animation tools are definitely better than what we can find in Houdini or what Houdini can offer for the time being. Over the last decade, Maya has played a role in countless best animated feature films like Disney's nominated films such as Wreck-It Ralph and their Oscar winner Frozen. Sony Pictures Animation also relied on Maya for their mega blockbuster hit and Oscar winner Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Maya has also excellent rigging tools with some nice built-in rigs that can be relied on to quickly be applied on models. Of course, what Maya can do in terms of rigging is not going to be relied on alone when used by, let's just say, a big studio such as Weta Digital or ILM, for instance, to rig a complex character such as the Hulk or Iron Man. They will most likely use tools they created in-house for working on the very advanced stuff they actually work on for the most part. Even though Houdini is not better than Maya overall in terms of animation, but the flexibility Houdini offers to animators especially professionals and experienced animators with the availability of developers' tools makes the part of rigging and animation so interesting and promising. It isn't the best for sure because there are some things that side effects needs to work on to make it even better knowing that Houdini has experienced a fundamental paradigm shift over the last few releases which makes it more appealing to animators more and more. Houdini brings a procedural approach to character rigging and characters can actually be wrapped into a single asset node for use by animator teams. Also, if you are not an experienced rigger or animator, you can use Houdini's automatic rigging tools and find a way to adapt to the way animation works, but of course advanced rigs demand from you more manual labor to work on complex stuff. Visual Effects When it comes to effects, Houdini has a few vital advantages over Maya, and even though this might cost a lot for most people, in terms of the steep learning curve, the difficulty of using complex nodes, and of course coding, but what you get will be very valuable. Houdini is fantastic with particles and simulations like fire, smoke, water, explosions, and much more. Maya, on the other hand, has some limitations compared to Houdini when it comes to visual effects, but also has pretty much everything needed for this type of work, especially what with Autodesk added to it in the last decade from new and better cloth and hair simulation tools and the powerful Bifrost that was used on some of the most iconic movies such as Avatar. In addition, of course, to the powerful plugins that can be used with Maya, such as Phoenix FD, Fume Effects, 
Ziva VFX, and so on. Lighting and Rendering When it comes to lighting and rendering, Houdini ships with the powerful rendering engine Mantra, but also supports third-party render engines, which offers more options to artists or studios that don't want to use Mantra. In addition to that, Houdini has no debate lighting system that provides flexible work environment for building shaders and creating visual effects too. In contrast, Maya used to be weaker in this department. I mean when it comes to the render engine it offered natively to its users. Until recently, when Autodesk bought Arnold, which is a strong and reliable render engine which can compete with the other render engines that can be integrated with Maya. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.